Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Victor Mature and Hedy Lamar in Samson and Delilah. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we have the type of motion picture that our industry, as well as the public, is always happy to welcome to the screen. It's Cecil B. DeMille's splendid production for Paramount Pictures of Samson and Delilah, one of the greatest successes in the history of motion pictures. It's been seen by more people than almost any other film and is still playing all over the world. And no wonder. For the story is one that appeals to moviegoers everywhere, the triumph of good over evil. The fact that we've heard the story since we were little children and have preconceived ideas of the characters made the picture doubly difficult to cast. However, I'm sure you'll agree that a perfect selection for the siren was Hedy Lamarr. Also starring tonight in his original role and a superb choice for the part is Victor Mature. I'm certain you remember how colorful this marvelous picture was. And I'm sure you'll agree, color adds so much to the pleasure of living. Lux flakes can add a great deal to your way of living too, particularly new Lux with color freshener, which can be depended upon to make lovely colored washables last longer. Now the curtain rises on Samson and Delilah, starring Victor Mature as Samson and Hedy Lamar as Delilah. A thousand years before Christ, in the village of Zora in the land of Dan, lived a man named Samson. There was greatness in him and weakness, strength and folly. But with these was a bold dream of liberty for his people held in bondage by the Philistines for 40 years. It is written in the Bible and the book of Judges that Samson left his village and went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines and then returned to Zorah to the house of his parents. Goats and the sheep can wander and be lost. Samson, my son, must journey to Timnath. <laughs> my mother has more spies than the master of the Philistines. Yes, more than the Saran himself. Brawling through the streets, drinking and dice throwing with our enemies. I was learning their ways, little mother. You'd do better to learn the ways of the Lord. You're the leader of Dan, chosen judge of your people. And uh, what else have you discovered? That you would marry a daughter of our enemies. A Philistine woman. Yes, oh, it is so. Oh, why can't you be like our neighbor's sons, content to choose a wife from your own village instead of acting like a stubborn, witless ox? And you would Miriam. harness... Miriam. You would harness this angel to a stubborn, witless ox? <laughs> no, a man must marry where his heart leads him. A man's heart can be blind. Samson, where is he? Samson! I'm here, Father. Here, yes, when you should have been in the village. Philistine soldiers at the well of Zora, beating our people, mocking our God. I will go to the village. No, save your strength, Samson. Miriam. The soldiers have gone. The trouble is past. Stay with him, Miriam. Ask him to tell you what he's just told to me. <laughs> what terrible thing have you done this time, Samson? Miriam, look at me. You're farther above me than the moon, Miriam. But not as hard to reach. Only stretch out your hand. Well, I, I don't want to hurt you, Miriam. You're like a sparrow, so gentle and so kind. Shall I say it for you, Samson? You love another woman, a woman of Timna. Yes, I can't forget her. It is the same with me. I cannot forget you. Leave me now and go to your father. Philistine. Marriage with a Philistine? No. 
My son would not bring this shame upon us. Her name is Semidar, father. I ask that you go to her father, Tubal, and tell him I will take his daughter to wife. This woman, it has come to me that someone else seeks her, too. Artur, the military governor of you Dan. You know this, and you still desire her? But he Artur is a lord among the Philistines. He doesn't frighten me. Samson, wait. Where do you go? Back to Timnath. To Semidar. <laughs> And Samson went to Timnath, to the house of Tubal. And in the garden, he saw the two daughters of Tubal. And one was Semedar, and one was Delilah. In the hand of Semedar was a spear, for on that day there would be a lion hunt, and Semedar would be among the hunters. And Samson beheld her hurling the spear, while on a low wall her sister Delilah sat watching her and eating the fruit of a plum tree. Great was Semedar's surprise upon seeing Samson. Samson, have you lost your senses? I told you I'd be back, Semidor. The hunting party will be here. The Saran himself is coming from Gaza. Oh, I uh, came to help him kill the lion. You'd rather help the lion kill the Saran? Not until he gives permission for our marriage. You have lost your senses. And my heart. I have been promised to Lord Artur. Even now he is in the house with my father. Then I shall tell Lord Artur that you're... You speak my name? Who are you? Artur. Or do I know you? Oh, yes. There's only one Danite fool enough to climb that wall. The governor of Dan has a hunter's eye. I just told Semidar Yes, I heard you. You will hunt in my chariot, Semidar. Samson thinks he can help us kill the lion. A judge of shepherds? <laughs> We're very grateful. A shepherd needs to know more about lions than a king. His life depends on it. A shepherd obeys the law. His life depends upon that. And the first law your fathers learned was to bow before Philistine spears. You like to have people bow to the might of spears. I like to have spears bow to people. A tall look. The spear, it, it bends in his hand like a reed in the wind. I have heard of the Danite's strength. He destroys a weapon that he lacks the skill to use. Perhaps Semidor will teach me after our marriage. Marriage? <laughs> your humor's even greater than your strength. Your master approaches, Samson. Perhaps he will see me then. The judge of Dan would do well to leave and seek a bride in other pastures. Come, Semidar. I don't like Artur either. If you'd kill the lion, Samson, they would call you great. I can bend their spears, but I can't outrun their horses. I could get you there first. We have stables. What's your price? Take me with you. <laughs> You're a bold little monkey. What's your name? Delilah. Come then, Delilah. Show me your father's stable. Faster, Samson, faster! Hold tight to the railing. I'll hold tight to you. Be careful, you'll fall out. No, I won't. Semidar doesn't love your strength as I do. I'd love to feel the power of your arms. I'd rather feel a wildcat on my back. <laughs> Will you tame me, Samson? I'll use you for lion bait. I don't see any lion. There on the rocks. Beyond the cave. Ah! Samson! You're more trouble than the lion. I'm afraid. Get up on that rock there and don't move. Oh, look out! God will give me strength. Just stay on the rock. And in the book of Judges, it is said that Samson came to the vineyards of Timnath, and behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And he rent him as he would have rent a kid, but he had nothing in his hand. You killed him with your hands. Oh, Samson. One cat at a time. What's the matter with you? I love you. That's what's the matter with me. I love you. The Saran. I came from Zora to see the Saran. I will see him here. This girl. My sister, Lord Saran. I do not know how she came here with this. Danite, isn't he? Or perhaps this little blossom from Tubal's garden can enlighten us. Oh, yes, Majesty, I can. Samson killed the lion with his bare hands. Never has there been such power in any man. So you are Samson, the troublemaker. The Saran knows me. But no good of you. You say he used no weapon? Just his two hands, Lord Saran. He was magnificent. Only a god could do what he did. Well, Danite, you have one worshipper. Artur, examine the beast. 
Find me the mark of the spear. Look, there is no blood. The wound must be on the other side. Turn him over. It's still warm. The body's warm. There is no mark upon the skin, my lord. I, I said there was no. Would you have us believe the beast dropped dead from fright? What you believe is your own affair. The girl spoke the truth. I should like to see this strength. Gamiska. My lord Saran. Listen well, Samson. Of all men, behold the mightiest. Now say that you lie. I spoke the truth. Gamiska. Break this boaster's bones. I have no quarrel with your warrior. This man has done me no harm. Fight him, Samson. Fight him! Like all boasters, the Danite is a coward. My whip, Garmiskar. Here, let him feel my whip. Then did the giant Garmiskar raise the lash, whereupon Samson did seize him. Over his head he held the warrior and dashed him to the ground. The hunter's prize is yours. Take my ring, Danite. I would like to name my own prize, Saran. What would you have? My throne? A Philistine bride. If it takes a pretty face to bind you to me, your request is granted. I take the woman, Semidar. My lord, Semidar is promised to me. I have given my word. She is yours, Danite. Go now to the woman. Oh, she, she, my lord, I, I, I beg you. I... There are other women, Arthur. Look, the sister's beauty is even greater. Could she be jealous of Semadar? My lord, is it wise to have this mad dog in our city? In our city, he may be tamed. If I may speak, Lord Saran, Samson could make no trouble if our tour brought his warriors to the wedding feast. The girl has the wisdom of a serpent. Take her home, our tour, and summon your warriors. Then went they all to the house of Tubal and gathered their warriors and guests and men of high station and the Saran declared a time of celebration and feasting. And great was the joy of Samson. The <laughs> wedding guest, Delilah. Why do you leave the guests? They hate him, Father. Because he is a Danite? Because he's a fool. Most men are, Delilah. There is nothing you can do about it. Sometimes a bee can move an ox. Well, go now. I would speak to Lord Artur. Where is she? Where is Simon Artur? She has gone to put on her wedding veil, Artur. Uh, well, the, bride, the bridegroom makes riddles, eh? Riddles? New garments for every man if one of us can guess the answer. But there's no reason to his riddle. What is it, this fool's riddle? Out of the eater came forth meat. Out of the strong came forth sweetness. It has no answer. Every riddle has an answer. Only you are all too stupid to find it. I join the guests, Otto. You will do well to do the same. Find it. Where? How? Not in your wine cup. Sharpen your wits, not your teeth. Don't you see Samson is laughing at you? Laughing at us? He's smarter than you. Has he told you the answer? No, but uh, I know someone who can get it. Who? Semidar. Yes, by Dagon, Semidar. I'll pay no forfeit to a Danite clown. Oh, yes, you will. You made a wager. There are those who'll burn down this house and all in it before they pay. You don't know Samson. It would be much safer if you got the answer from Semidar. Maybe you're right. Women always yield to you, Artur. Now go to my sister. <laughs> This is nonsense, Artur. Why should the guests care about a stupid game of words? It is no game to us, Semidar. It is Danite against Philistine. You are trying to frighten me. You do not want me to marry him. You were promised to me. There's hatred at this wedding feast. They say you've joined Samson against us. Then they lie. Then tell them. Tell them the answer to the riddle. But I do not know it. Surely Samson would share the answer with so lovely a bride. And if he won't? Get it. Get it, or death may solve the Danite's riddle. <laughs> What's wrong, Semidar? Why, you're crying. All these tears over a riddle. If you loved me, you would tell me the answer. But I am nothing well, to... Of course you. I'll tell you. Now listen, if a honeycomb pleases you, a lion will not keep us apart. Honeycomb? Is that the answer? Remember when I last came to see you? I told you I'd passed the bones of a lion. Well? The sun had bleached the bones. The wild bees had swarmed there. And you brought me the honeycomb. What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? Oh, 
Do you still wish to kiss me? Semitar. Semitar. And even as Samson spoke the answer to the riddle, Artur stood in the shadows and heard the words. And when Samson returned to the feast, did Artur rise up and claim the forfeit for every man? You answer wisely, Artur. But only two knew the answer. Myself and Semidor. You're a bad loser, bridegroom. Pay your debt. I'll pay my debt. The same way you found the answer. Let us have peace here. I bring my daughter to be married. Then show her face so all can see. Semidor, who cheats before our wedding's done. The cats from the Timnath alleys could learn much from you. She stands with us. Return to your people. I'll return. But first I must pay my debt. No, no, wait. Let him go, father. But the Saran gave her to Samson. And Samson called her a cat from the alleys of Timnath. This is terrible. He doesn't want her now. But Artur does. Artur? And the bridal chamber is waiting for a bride. Artur, military governor of all of Den. Yes. Why not? And as Artur took Semedar to wife, outside the walls of Timnath, Samson lay in wait for a passing caravan of merchants. Philistines they were, much laden with rich garments and cloth. And he fell upon them and scattered them across the desert. And of their stores he took garments enough for each man, but not one more, and returned to Tubal's house. So now you're paid, the lot of you. Where's Semedor? I said, where's Semedor, Tubal? Where is she? But you said you had done with her. You spoke of her in hate, so I, I gave her to Artur. Artur? What could I do? You want to know Danite for a son-in-law? Here, Samson, my other daughter. Take Delilah. See how much more beautiful she is than Semedar. Did you ever see eyes like that? So full of love for you. She will grow into a rare blossom. She will grow into a thorn bush. Did a thorn bush steal the chariot that took you to the lion? Did a thorn bush tell the Saran how you killed it with your bare hands? No, I did. And he believed me. Then you chose Semedar. Take your claws out of me. You'll never get them out of you. I made Artur steal a secret of the riddle from Semedar. I lied to stop you. You for marrying him. I'd kill to keep you. You're the only thing in the world I want. Hold this fork tongued at her before I put my heel on her. If you crush the life out of me, I'll kiss you with my dying breath. And you want me to marry this wildcat? Stand aside, all of you. I go to Semedor. Kill him. Kill I go the to take my kill blood. Take to your swords. Kill the Kill the kill him. So did they rise against him, warriors of the Philistines. But the spirit of the Lord came upon Samson, and they fell before him. Swords and spears harmed him not, nor the blazing torches of fire cast upon him. You came to this house as wedding guests. Fire and death are your gifts to my bride. For all that I do against you, I shall be blameless. I will give you back fire for fire, and death for death! Now did the house of Tubal lie in ashes and ruins, and among the Philistine dead was Semedar. Only did Artur escape, and Delilah, and her serving woman. Turn away, little mistress. Do not look any more. All you have left in the world is ashes and death. Samson lives. May his flesh rot from his bones. Be still, old fool. If it takes all my life, I'll make him curse the day he was born. He called you a fork-tongued adder. He's going to feel its sting. What strength can these little hands have against him? Perhaps greater than a lion's and softer than a dove's. I'll find strength, Hashem, strength to destroy him. stars return with act two of Samson and Delilah, Libby Collins has some late movie news. A wonderful comedy from Universal International called Weekend with Father. With Van Heflin, lovely Patricia Neal, and delightful nine-year-old Gigi Perot as its co-stars. 
Van and Patricia play two nice people who both have been married before and now want to marry each other. But the trouble is their respective children, including Gigi, who refuse to make friends. I hear Van took quite a beating from the youngsters in the summer camp sequences. <laughs> he certainly <laughs> did. They played all kinds of tricks on him, but he was a good sport. Patricia, I imagine, looks gorgeous as usual. Absolutely stunning. In Weekend with Father, she wears a suit, two riding habits, four cocktail gowns, and six marvelous evening dresses, all designed by Bill Thomas, Universal International's designer. There's a white silk blouse with three-quarter sleeves worn with a sweater, a white turtleneck blouse, and a long-sleeved tailored blouse in bright yellow. All perfect, even for a workaday world because they're completely luxable. Beautiful fabrics and colors couldn't get safer care. Lux has long been a standby with leading Hollywood studios, and now new Lux, enriched with color freshener, is even better than ever. It seems like a miracle, the way whites look white as new, luxing after luxing. They don't turn yellow or gray, and prints look sharper and clearer than ever before. In fact, all colors stay so vivid, so new, you can hardly believe your eyes. You can see why the best-dressed women in the world, Hollywood's famous screen stars, are so thrilled with new Lux. I know Patricia Neal insists on it for all her personal things, because no other soap, no suds of any kind, is safer. New Lux with color freshener is the perfect care for all the lovely things you wash by machine or by hand. Get a big box tomorrow. Give your washables that fresh as new Lux look. Now, Mr. William Keeley, our producer. Act two of Cecil B. DeMille's Samson and Delilah, starring Hedy Lamar as Delilah and Victor Mature as Samson. <laughs> Samson returned to his people, and none would deliver him unto the Philistines. Flogged with the people of Dan, and taxes levied to destroy them, and their fields stripped of the grain, till at length Samson could bear no more. And he sent forth emissaries to the Philistines, spare the people of Dan, and he would surrender. bound him with ropes and turned their way back to Gaza, back to the Saran, king of the Philistines. Now had the Saran taken unto his favor a new woman, the dark beauty of Timnath, Delilah. Even a ruby loses luster beside your lips, Delilah. It will take a sapphire and an emerald together to match your blue-green eyes. I've known the ways of many women who fill the veins with fire but only one Delilah. My Lord has given me many gifts, but none more precious than his favor. I bring you more than gems, Delilah. Samson is our prisoner. Even now, Lord Artur returns to Gaza. I've waited a long time to hear those words. Uh, what will you do with Samson, my Lord? We might hang him by his heels from your balcony, or what would you suggest? Make him turn the grist mill, whipped and driven like an animal, where all Gaza can mock him and laugh at him, humble him, bring him to his knees. But I thought you once admired this Danite. As I admire the gutter rats of Gaza. Chain the lion killer to the grist mill. Yes, why not? Anything. Only let me be there to watch it. <laughs> They were yet some distance from Gaza, Artur, his soldiers, and their prisoner, and a storm was brewing in the sky, and the clouds grew black, and the soldiers of the Philistines paused and found shelter. My jester has come to amuse you, Samson. You see what he brings? A skull, a skull of an ass. He moves the jaws, and behold, a voice speaks. Unconquerable leader of the Danites, defender of the invisible god, the ass salutes you. Eeyore! Eeyore! <laughs> Perhaps he would pray again, Jester. Yes, let us hear you pray, Samson. Eeyore! Eeyore! Your pledge. Your pledge to my people. My lord, he can speak. Words come forth. Has the pledge to my people been fulfilled? 
They will not starve. As truly as you are bound by ropes, our pledge to each other is fulfilled. Then hear me, O Lord my God. Hear me. <laughs> Gird me for battle against the swords of my enemies. Oh, great skull of an ass, hear me. <laughs> Forsake me not, O Lord, but strengthen my arms to destroy them. Oh, the sky blackens and the thunder rolls. He prays for a sign after the sign appears. Let them see thy power, O God! The ropes, look, they break apart. His God is hurt. Is him. him. Let no, 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 alive. Use chains. Bring chains. In the book of Judges, it is written that the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his bonds loosened from off his hands. And he found a jawbone of an ass, and he took it, and he slew a thousand men therewith. And you expect me to believe this, Lord Arthur? One man defeated all your soldiers? Never did mortal man fight like this, O Saran. His strength was greater than any instrument of war. What weapon had he? What weapon? More shame to us, Majesty. The jawbone of an ass. A jester's toy. The vultures circle over Lehi, Saran, and Samson is gone under the hills. Lord Arthur, military governor of Dan, Hakim of armies, beaten with the jawbone of an ass. I asked for 10,000 men to crush the Danites for all time. Instead, you send me tax collectors. Our taxes delivered Samson into your hands. It was you who could not hold him. This Samson has some unknown power. No man can stand against him. Perhaps he'd fall before a woman. Delilah. Even Samson's strength must have a weakness. There isn't a man in the world who will not share his secret with some woman. This one is clever, Arthur. She speaks truth. More men have been trapped by smiles than by ropes. Then perhaps she knows a woman who could entice this barbarian, this killer. I can deliver Samson to you. Such devotion touches me, Delilah. What would you gain by his capture? My lord's favor. You have that already. No, there must be some other way. When my father and sister lay dead in the ashes of our home because of Samson, he laughed at my tears. You cannot refuse me, my lord. What promise do you ask? I will learn the secret of his strength. But when he stands captive and is weak as other men, no drop of his blood shall be shed. No blade shall touch his skin. By the sacred pillars of the temple, I demand his death. I want his life. Chain him to the grist mill. Let him grind our grain like a beast. Let the people mock him and make sport of him until he draws his breath in agony and every word he speaks is a prayer for death. You have my promise. My lord is the wisest of kings and the greatest of men. As a king, I have no choice. As a man, I am letting you leave because you want to. King of my love, I go to destroy your enemy and mine. Delilah. Delilah. My love is only for you. Could not a man who could stop the heart of a lion stir the heart of a woman? I will deliver Samson to you before the month of harvest. Samson had retired to the hills of Dan. But frequent were his descents into the valley, and many were his prizes, the rich caravans of the Philistines. And the spoils of the caravans were spread among the people of Dan, for Samson had said, As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. Therefore it came to Delilah to make a caravan, soldiers and camels, and to journey into the valley of Sorek, for this was the valley that Samson and the men of Samson had been known to favor. Look at it, Samson. As fine a prize as I've ever seen. Yes. Stay behind the rocks, Sal. They'll see enough of us in good time. It's getting dark. We'll make camp soon. Yes. The pool by the temple ruins. But I still don't understand why the soldiers left. Why would they leave, Samson? Why else but to search for us? We will wait for darkness. So, come now, back to the hills. <laughs> Captain, come here. Yes, mistress? I shall spend the night here. Forgive me, mistress, but our men are not too few. You will take them all and leave. 
Only the camel driver shall remain and uh, my servant, Hysham. If the Danite is watching, he will know you are helpless here. I know. Lord Atu and his soldiers are waiting by the Scorpion's Hill. When the time comes, I will send for him. Now go. And when the moon was high and the shadows filled the temple ruins, did the men of Samson descend. Then did they lead off the camels of Delilah's caravan, and did Samson enter the tent, and there beheld a woman with a veil. Don't cry out. I won't. Are you afraid? Of a woman, yes. Hmm. Your caravan is rich. The jewel box is in that silver chest. Your husband, where is he? I have no husband. Your table is laid for two. For whom do you wait? I'm expecting a caller. Who? You, Samson. You know my name? All Gaza knows your name. They don't like it, I'm told. They respected it before the mighty Samson became a common robber. And Delilah became the great courtesan of Gaza. No, I'm stupid, Samson. To think I could deceive you. Steal what you like. This is not stealing. Your saran taxes us. I tax the Philistines. Where is the rest of it? Not far away. I will hide nothing from you. The oldest trick in the world. A silk trap baited with a woman. Do you know a better bait, Samson? Men always respond. Of all the women in Gaza, why did the saran send you? I asked to come. Why? I knew you'd yield to any other woman. <laughs> and you came here to save me? No, I came to betray you. You could bind a man tighter than the saran's chains. Could I bind you? No, you're going back to the saran. The only way you can be trusted. Oh, will you kill me yourself? You could crush me between these two hands. Why don't you? I told you once I'd kiss you with my dying breath. Your kiss has the sting of the death. I don't believe you could kill me. Try. <laughs> You're afraid to kill me. I'll let the devil do that. I know you will, but don't make me eat supper alone. May I call my servant? If you wish. Hysham. Yes, mistress? I'll go back to Gaza at daylight. You'll leave tonight. Oh, we're leaving, Hysham. Have the men load the camels. What camels? His bandits have stolen your camels, and the drivers have run to the hills. How can I go, Samson? I'll have your camels brought back. Why not bring them yourself tomorrow? Because when my back's turned, you'll send for Artur's soldiers. I couldn't send for anyone if you were with me. Hysham, pour the wine. So did Samson linger by the ruins of the temple in the Valley of Sorek. And the night waned, and still six other nights. And it came to pass that on the seventh night, Samson and the woman sat by the pool in the cool of the rushes. And now what are you doing? I'm weaving. I'm weaving seven green reeds for our seven days. I'm weaving you a crown. <laughs> a lion with lilies in its mane. Oh, this crown shall have a secret power. For its wearer or its weaver. Oh, only a secret can buy a secret. I have no secrets left to tell. No? You've never told me why you are stronger than other men? Is it some herb you mix in your food or some charmed oil you rub into your body? What would you do if you knew? bind you. Why? So you could never leave me. Delilah, about my secret. No, I will not listen. You ask me to tell you. I no longer wish to hear it. But you've plagued me for days to tell you. The now... night I came to this valley of Zorik, you wanted to send me away. You were right. It is better that I go. There is too much between us. You still fear me more than you love me. I don't fear you enough. You don't trust me enough. I love you enough. No, Samson, no. I don't want to be armed with a weapon to destroy you. Weapon? That wouldn't be a weapon if you really loved me. Oh, Samson, how can there be any doubt left in you? If there is, I'll end it now. My strength comes from him who shaped the earth and who gave life to all things that dwell upon it. Your invisible God? Yes. But how does his power reach you? Is he here with us now? He's everywhere. In the wind, in the sea, in the fire. In your heart, if you believe in him. And can I share this power with you? Anyone can share it. As long as he keeps faith with the Almighty. Many of my vows I've broken. But one I've kept. A vow has made you strong? Oh, it's much more than that. 
Do you remember the lion I killed? I'll never forget. The strength of the lion makes him king of the beast. And the great ruff of his mane is the mark of his power. The shield of his strength. Samson, this is the mark of your power. Your hair. And if it were shorn from your head... I'd be as weak as any other man. You believe that, don't you? From the beginning, the prophets taught me so. Your power is in your hair. Look how it curls around my fingers. Black as a raven's wing, wild as a storm. Shall I pull it out and steal your power? How can you steal what is already yours? Come with me to Egypt, Samson. We'll not be Danite and Philistine there. Only Samson and Delilah. And nothing will ever take you out of my arms. If only you and I were... Mistress, the Danite's friends. His friends are here. What friends? I saw and Miriam. Miriam? She brings news from Zara. My mother. How did you leave her? Chained to a post and whipped. Your father stoned. Philistine swine. There is killing and burning in every village. While this woman makes you drunk with her kisses, the Philistines murder your people. You are falling into Artur's net, Samson. The Philistines strike your people to get you. Your mother cries your name, Samson. I will make myself ready. I will go to Zorro. No, no, Samson. This milk-faced girl with her cow's eyes will lead you to your death. You love him. It is in your face when you look at him. You want him for yourself. Yes, I love him. In his face, I see all that is strong and good. His name is like a cry of hope for us. His face, his name, shadows on the wall. You think that is love? I love him as a man of flesh and blood. He is not leaving you for me. There is a higher voice that speaks to him. I cannot fight against his God. But no woman will take him from me. Then did Samson send forth Miriam and Saul, and he said unto them that he would follow. He would tarry in the tent of Delilah for but a moment. You called me Delilah? Yes. The wine of parting is bitter, Samson. Not as bitter as blood. You cannot wipe away such love as I have given you without even a farewell. I have a new debt to pay the Philistines. Then I'll come to you in Egypt. No, Samson. You belong to Miriam. She's the good in you. I'm the weakness. The love that would enslave you. I'll never be free of you, Delilah. When you are gone, my arms will be empty. My world will be empty. Delilah, the wine you gave me. Delilah, the wine. Aisham. He drank the wine? Yes. <laughs> Tell the Lord Artur's messenger, I had the secret. Before we bring you Act Three of Samson and Delilah, I'd like to present a guest who went from UCLA to Paramount simply because she had her picture taken for Christmas, Nancy Hale. Now, suppose you tell us the rest of the story, Nancy. Well, Mr. Keeley, when I went back to pick up my photographs, an agent there insisted I go to Paramount for an interview. Then came a screen test and a contract and membership in Paramount's golden circle of promising young players. You visit the sets, of course. Yes, studying acting technique is part of our training. I was especially interested in watching them film Detective Story. Yes, the screen version of Sidney Kingsley's highly successful play has been made into a wonderful motion picture. As a relentless detective, Kirk Douglas prosecutes criminals so vigorously that he wrecks his private life when he discovers his own wife, played by Eleanor Parker, once made an unfortunate mistake. The great cast of Detective Story also includes William Bendix as a detective with a heart and five of the original Broadway cast. I understand Eleanor Parker made a quick trip to New York to see the play before starting the picture. Well, how about that, Libby? Yes, she did, but not so quick that she didn't get in some shopping. She picked up some beautiful French handmade lingerie that's so exquisite she'd hardly dare wash it if it weren't for Lux. Oh, I'd trust anything to Lux. Anything that I can put in water. Well, that's the way Eleanor feels about Lux, too. And so do scores of Hollywood screen stars. New Lux, enriched with color freshener, is more wonderful than ever for delicate colors. Pastels positively glow with new beauty every time you lux them. 
don't get faded and washed out looking. And white things stay just as dazzling white as new. Nylon, silks, rayons, cottons, too. Thank you for coming tonight, Nancy Hale. We'll be looking forward to your screen debut. When New Lux with Color Freshener made its debut, thousands of women rushed to try it. And they said, there's never been anything like it before. Why don't you try it for the lovely things you wash by machine or by hand? Get a big box tomorrow. Give your lingerie all your nice things that fresh as new Lux look. We pause now for station identification. This is the CBS Radio Network. The curtain rises on Act Three of Cecil B. DeMille, Samson and Delilah. Starring Victor Mature as Samson and Hedy Lamar as Delilah. And it came to pass that when Samson awoke, the hair of his head was shorn and bound were his arms in chains. And around the tent were the soldiers of the Philistines, and within the tent were Artur and Delilah. Lion of Dan, shorn as a you. You've done well, Delilah. But remember, no blade shall touch his skin. No drop of his blood shall be shed. Why don't you call on your guard now, Samson? I've betrayed him. You would not hear me. I could have loved you with a fire to make all other loves seem like ice. I would have gone with you to Egypt, lived only for you. But one word from that den-eyed lily and you run whining at her heels. No man leaves Delilah. You trusted her? Burn her image into your memory. She's the last woman you'll ever see. Guards, yes, bind him to the pole of the tent. And you, Sharif, bring in the fire. It is here, Excellency. The brazier of flaming coals. And in them the blade of your sword. Your punishment, Danite. If you cannot see us, you cannot harm us. If I have no strength to fight, I will need no eyes to find you. The sword. Take it from the coals. Yes, Excellency. Sharif, you know the bargain of our master. No blade can touch his skin. Now, hold it before his eyes. And thus was Samson blinded and could see no more. And then did his enemies bring him to the city of Gaza and cast him into a pit in a prison house, chained to a great grinding stone, even as Delilah had wished. And there did the prison keepers beat on his back with scourges, and the people of Gaza spat upon him and jeered. And there, too, came the Saran of Gaza and the woman Delilah. Listen to them. By their yelps, you'd think they'd felled our lion themselves. He has not dared to look at me. He cannot see you. I'll make him see me. Stand back, Mr. Stand back. Let the woman go where she will. Master, you pig of a Danite. Show them how I taught you to grind the corn. Well, mistress, does our new ox please you? Bend your back, you Danite scum. He's blind. Well, Delilah, did you make him see you? He can never see me again. Does that disturb you? I had your promise. No blade touched his skin, no drop of blood was shed. You, you played with words to rob him of his eyes. It was you who betrayed him, my love, not I. He was captive in chains, yet the lord of the five cities could not show him mercy. Did you show him mercy, Delilah? You wanted vengeance. You have it. Great was the torment of Samson's flesh, but even greater was the torment in the heart of the woman, for she had seen the evil she had done. Then in the deep of the night, Delilah went forth to the prison house, and with silver did she bribe the guards, and there, alone, did she see Samson kneeling in the pit, and she heard his prayer. I am despised by all men, O Lord. They mock me, saying he trusts his God to deliver him. 
You are my God. Be not far from me, for there is no other help. My strength is melted like wax, and my heart is dry of hope. I am blinded and among enemies. Oh, Lord, oh, my strength, send me your... Who, who's there? I, I can hear you. Samson. I prayed for an angel of the Lord, and the devil sends me you. All I want is to comfort you. Let me come near you. You were near me in the valley of Sorek. I would give my life to undo what I've done. Let me be your eyes. Through my eyes, you will see again. Through all the long darkness, I prayed that you'd be delivered into my hands. I'm here. I will not cry out. God has not forsaken me. His will be done. Samson, your chains, they are broken. Your strength has come back. Your God has answered you. He did not forsake me. My God has not forsaken He's me. He's made you free. I will find the swiftest camels in Gaza. By midday, we can be in the land of the pharaohs. God did not give me back my strength to run from my enemies. You cannot fight what you cannot see. Oh, judge of the earth. Do not let me forgive her. My arms will hold you again. And when I curse you for my darkness... I will kneel and ask for forgiveness. Vengeance is yours, O oh Lord. Strike or destroy her, for I cannot. My love, my love. Delilah, Delilah, when my eyes could see you, I was blind. Samson, we must hurry. They will be coming to take you to the temple. The temple? That is today? Yes. They'll humble you before the great idol Dagon. They'll bind you between the two sacred columns. They'll scourge you. They'll... Two they'll... columns? The temple stands between two columns. So close I may be bound between them. Yes, but Egypt has a thousand temples, each more beautiful than the other. I will stay here. Do not enter their temple today, Delilah. Oh, Samson. I will stay till they take me to the temple. And Samson spoke no more, and Delilah wept and left the prison house. And Samson restored the chains to his body and was led to the temple of Dagon. For on this day did the Philistines seek to appease their idol with all manner of ceremonies and the beating of cymbals. And Samson was placed in a dungeon until he would be led before Dagon and humbled. And it came to pass that certain of Samson's friends had journeyed in disguise to Gaza, for they knew of this day. And among them was Miriam and the youth called Saul. Samson, it is I, Saul. Saul? Saul, how did you come here? Never mind. We've come to free you, to take you home. There is no home for a leader who fails his people. We'll always follow you, Samson. I've led you a crooked pass, Saul. Perhaps someday you will guide them, join them together, and be their first king. Me? A king? Saul. Saul, I, I hear many voices. Is their temple filled? Like wheat in a shock. Then go. Take the others and depart. No, no. We can't leave you. If you've ever loved me, Saul, Go back to Dan. And even as Samson spoke, Miriam had gone to the Saran in the temple. And seated with the Saran was Delilah. You chance much to seek me out? Why? You are a king, a conqueror. I ask mercy. Mercy? What have you done? I ask mercy for a blind and helpless man. Samson can harm you no more. He has lost everything but the love of his people. Let me take him back to them. But he is not my prisoner. He was conquered by a woman. If she wishes to give him to you, she has my permission. Delilah, once in the Valley of Sorek, you said you loved him. What whimpering lies do you tell our king? You want him for yourself, to hold him close and comfort him. You want to bear him children. I'd rather see him dead than in your arms. Take her away. <laughs> So was Miriam cast into the street, even as Samson was led from the dungeon. And there in the great courtyard of Dagon did they torment him, beating him with whips and prodding him with sticks, until at length Delilah could bear no more. They are devils. No, they're very human. The weak always band together to pull down the strong. 
He will never kneel to Dagon. There is great persuasion at the end of a whip. No whip will break his spirit. Either he kneels to Dagon or he dies before him. I will go to him. As you wish, Delilah. But if you go to him, you cannot come back to me. Look at him! Look at him! Look at him! Look at him. Yet did she go and armed herself with a whip. And all present shouted her name, for they thought that Delilah had come to do Samson still more hurt. But in her mind there was a plan, and though her lash was sharp, her words were soft. That, that voice, it's you, Delilah. I must hurt you, my love, that all may see you. Forgive me. I warned you to stay away from the tent. When I strike, catch hold of the lash. You will lead me to the columns. He leads like a goat. Put a wreath to his nose. Lead me to the columns. How many more steps? Not many, dear love. And the altar is there? Yes, and on either side, the columns. Who stands there? The high priest of Dagon. Give me your hand. Here. Here is the column. And here is the other. The house of the temple stands on these columns? Yes, yes. You spoke to the Danite? What did you say? I told him to kneel, holy one, to humble himself before Dagon. Let him be scourged until he turns from his god. Go, Delilah. Go, Delilah, now while you can. No. Death will come into this temple. The hand of the Lord will strike. I'm not afraid. Lead him until he kneels to Dagon. Scourge him to his knees beneath the feet of Dagon. Make him kneel to Dagon. And the crowd roared with the frenzy, and the priests of Dagon beat him with scourges. But Samson stood between the columns, and he bowed and asked. And on each great column he placed a hand, and lo, did the columns move. And a mighty rumbling was heard even over the voices of the Philistines. Kill him! Kill him! Almighty Dagon, be more powerful than Samson. My eyes have seen thy glory, O God! Now let me die with my enemies! fell before the might of his arms, and the temple crashed about him and upon him, and about and upon the Philistines, and upon the woman Delilah, who would not leave him, and who perished there at his side. Upon a hill outside the walls of Gaza, there were two from the land of Dan who heard and saw and knew what had transpired. He was so strong. Why did he have to die, Miriam? His strength will never die, Saul. Men will tell the story of Samson for yet a thousand years. Mr. Keeley will return with our stars for a curtain call in just a moment. But first, an important announcement from the makers of Lux. This is the last time I can make their sensational Christmas offer. A stunning assortment of 12 glittering tree ornaments, icicles, snowflakes, and snowballs that will make your tree sparkle like stars in the sky. These novel metal foil ornaments would cost at least $1.50 if you bought them at retail, but you can get them from Lux for just 50 cents and one Lux box top. Right to Lux, Box 16, New York 46. You've never seen such a profusion of colors. Tangerine orange, rich gold, emerald green, sparkling silver, magenta red, sapphire blue, and blazing silver on the back. They'll dance and twinkle on your tree like a thousand tiny lights. They're folded flat when they reach you, open easily into beautiful, dazzling, 12-sided ornaments. These shining ornaments are unbreakable and easy to hang. Just slip a tree hook or a piece of string through the metal hole. You can refold them to store and use them year after year. Order yours now so you won't miss out. We can't accept any orders after November 30th. Allow three weeks for delivery. And remember, this is the last time we can offer these novel ornaments. If you would like more than one set, enclose 50 cents and one Lux box top for each set of 12 to Lux, Box 16, New York 46, New York. That's Lux... Box 16, New York 46, New York. Send for yours tomorrow, sure. This offer is good only in the United States, Alaska, and Hawaii. 
Now here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. And we want them to come forward for a special bow. Eddie Lamar and Victor Mature. Eddie, we're very happy that we could lure you up from Mexico to do Samson to Delilah for us. You were both so perfect in the picture. Thank you. It was wonderful working for a great director like Cecil B. DeMille. And I wouldn't have missed doing it for you. Delilah is one of my favorite roles. My favorite spy is also one of your favorites, isn't it? Yes. In my favorite spy, I am Bob Hope's favorite spy, and he's mine. Sounds like <laughs> favorite is your favorite word. <laughs> well, it's a very funny picture. Bob Hope is hilarious in a dual role. And I'm pleased you had an opportunity to display your comedy talents, Hetty. Oh, I appreciated the opportunity to have a chance to reform for a change. <laughs> Are you going to be on hand for the premiere, Hetty? No, but uh, I would have loved to, because it's being held in the home of a charming lady in Belea, Ohio. Yes, she won the contest that Paramount Pictures recently held. And as a reward, Bob Hope will be her guest for dinner. Reward? Well, only Bob could think of an idea like that. <laughs> Just think, she has to feed him and then the whole family has to look at him all evening. <laughs> <laughs> well, they won't mind looking at you, Hetty. You're probably one of their favorites. And speaking of uh, <clears throat> favorites again, Hetty, do you have plenty of Lux Flakes with you in Acapulco, Mexico? Of course, Bill. I wouldn't be without Lux Flakes and I shall take another supply back with me. And now, Bill, how about next week's play? Well, next week, we'll have three outstanding stars. John Hodiak, Donna Reed, and Adolph Manjou. And we'll present them in a story of a hectic romance. An exciting picture climaxed by the Indianapolis Memorial Day races. You've probably guessed it's the metro golden Mayor screen hit, To Please a Lady. And I'd love the picture, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night. You are both wonderful. <laughs> That vivacious blonde star, Ann Southern, knows a wonderful beauty pickup. She says, a Lux soap bath is so refreshing. Leaves my skin softer, smoother. Lux lovely all over. Why don't you take Ann Southern's tip? You'll find a daily bath with the generous big bath size Lux toilet soap is a real beauty bath. The active lather is so rich and creamy, abundant even in hardest water. And you'll love the delicate Lux perfume. It's a flower-like fragrance that really clings, leaves all your skin sweetly fresh. Tomorrow, get a supply of this famous beauty soap in the big bath size cake. You'll quickly discover why nine out of ten screen stars are Lux girls. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening. When the Lux Radio Theater presents John Hodiak, Donna Reed, and Adolph Manjou in To Please a Lady. This is William Keeley saying goodnight to you from Hollywood. Tonight's appearance of Victor Mature was made possible through the kind permission of 20th Century Fox Studios whose current release is the Technicolor picture Golden Girl, starring Mitzi Gaynor, Dale Robertson, and Dennis Day. Heard in our cast tonight were Gail Gordon as the narrator, Edgar Barrier as Saran, Life Erickson as Artur, Herbert Rawlinson as Manoa, Hope Sansbury as Hysham, Norma Varden as Hazel, and Kay Stewart, Lynn Allen, Herbert Butterfield, Jeffrey Silver, Bill Boucher, Jonathan Hole. Theodore Van Elts, Robert Griffin, Bill Johnstone, and Eddie Marr. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Rudy Schrager. Our Lux Radio Theater production of Samson and Delilah has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, Hollywood's own beauty soap. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear To Please a Lady, starring John Hodiak, Donna Reed and Adolph Manjou. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>